Wow, so the Bank of Canada held a press conference this morning and they've made a huge switch in their view of the economy. And I think it's gonna impact every single Canadian, especially if you're in or one day want to be in the housing market. And also this is gonna impact Canadians in terms of job prospects, whether or not they'll be getting raises and the entire cost of living and quality of life in Canada. It all comes on the heels of the release of the Monetary Policy Report, uh, just came out this morning. It's a 30 page document. I've gone through it and found all of the most impactful parts to share with you. And this was also paired with a press conference from the Bank of Canada, the Governor Tiff Macklem. We're gonna take a listen to that here and there also. As I mentioned, the big news is that the Bank of Canada is kind of switching its stance and it's doing so and signaling that it's doing so with one of the three tools that the Bank of Canada tends to use in order to impact the economy. You'd be familiar with the uh, first one for sure, that's interest rates, right? They can largely control whether interest rates go up or down. The second one is kind of similar to that called quantitative easing or quantitative tightening, essentially uh, growing or shrinking the money supply. Um, we're not gonna focus on that too much today, but the third one is is where they've made a big impact and a big change just as of today. This third tool that they're using is called forward guidance. It's what the bank says and communicates to average Canadians. Now this has a lot bigger of an impact than you might think. Just listen to this clip and think to yourself, okay, what does this guy want me to be thinking from him saying what he's saying? With overall demand in the economy no longer running ahead of supply, governing council's discussion of monetary policy is shifting from whether our policy rate is restrictive enough to restore price stability to how long it needs to stay at the current level. Let me read between the lines a little bit there for you. For, for the past year, year and a half, they've only been talking about, okay, we are trying to decide when or if we need to raise rates again. That's not the discussion anymore. Now they're saying, we're not talking about whether or not we need to raise, we're seeing that as very unlikely. Now we're starting to talk about how long we're gonna have to wait before we cut rates. They're saying rate increases in the future, not super likely, but cuts, uh, prepare yourself, they're gonna start to come. What does this mean? And to me, it means that the Bank of Canada is seeing some bad signs. You have to ask yourself why and why now? What is it that the Bank of Canada is seeing now to convince them that it could soon be the time for lower rates? Well, lower rates are a stimulant for the economy used to increase economic growth by allowing people and businesses to borrow more and borrow more cheaply, largely increasing the amount that people and businesses spend. Essentially, when things look bad, central banks cut rates. And today, in the report that we briefly looked at, the Bank of Canada released a report that explains for the very first time these bad signs that they're seeing in the economy. Let's take a closer look here. This is where I want to start, and don't worry, this looks complicated, but it's actually not at all. I kind of have this sneaking suspicion that people make things look more complex so that people don't look at them as closely, but it's actually really, really simple. This chart is showing you essentially the either growth or shrinkage of how much each average person in Canada is spending, right? This is the growth of consumption per capita or per person, and it has been negative. For the past two quarters and their projections for the next two quarters, the next uh, six months, they say, okay, over this entire period of time, the amount of money that people are spending on a yearly basis per person is shrinking year to year. Now, this is sort of a signal that, okay, most Canadians aren't feeling that good, but also as a result, the aggregate economy isn't feeling that good because what is an economy if it's not a representation of the people and businesses inside of it? And I think this sort of proves what I've been saying on the channel for the past six months or so, that if we did not have the dramatic increase in population, our GDP, or our measure of our economic output as a country, would have been in the negatives for this entire past year. Um, you can see that here because per person, people are spending less. Of course, that might be simplifying things a little bit, but I think it's interesting nonetheless. And another thing that's interesting and that the Bank of Canada is saying, hey, this is not great news for our economy, I guess, depending on how you look at it, we'll get to that in a moment. But they're saying, okay, we're seeing our unemployment rate increase, our employment rate decrease. And they say this is because we've been, well, creating less new jobs than there have been new people entering the country. 
This is a huge departure from where we were just a year ago when there were still conversations going on about, oh, we have such a labor shortage. Nobody wants to work. We can't fill these positions. We're gonna need to raise people's wages so that they'll actually come work here. Now things have totally shifted the other way saying, okay, well, we're actually now, we have more people than we do jobs and the labor market conditions, as it says right here, have eased, right? We have a looser labor market rather than a tight labor market where there's not enough people to fill the jobs. And while the unemployment rate for now has risen only modestly to 5.8% from 5.5%, this is at least something that the Bank of Canada is keeping their eyes on and could be one of the reasons they've changed the way they're talking about things. In further talking about population growth, take a look at this from the Bank of Canada's report. Let me move myself over here so you can see a little more clearly. They study the impact of strong population growth and the inflation in rental prices. One of the parts of the uh, CPI or inflation metric that we look at is the growth of rental prices. This is inside of the shelter component alongside a number of other items, including mortgage interest cost. The takeaway is that the red line, uh, that's the rental price growth year over year, and the year over year population growth, that's the green line, well, they're rather correlated here, as you can see. And one thing, if we sort of look forward, of course, we've seen this announcement of a capping of the amount of international students accepted, um, uh, more pressure on immigration policy in Canada. This could suggest that, okay, if we do see a decrease in Canada's growth of its population, that rental prices might come down a little bit, or at the very at least the growth of those rental prices could come down, um, resulting in overall inflation coming down a little bit, um, something that would make the Bank of Canada at least feel better about their potential rate cutting future. And even more interesting, shelter is above and beyond rental price surges. Um, the shelter, including mortgage interest costs, is propping up the current inflation number. Take a look at this. Mortgage interest costs and rental price inflation have risen sharply and are currently around 29% and 8% respectively. We already talked about that 8%, but this 29% is mortgage interest cost increases year over year. Essentially, people this year are paying 29% more than they did last year on their mortgage interest. Now this is especially interesting because it's something that the Bank of Canada, better or worse, uh, controls, right? Uh, because they've increased rates so dramatically, of course mortgage interest rates are, are going to come up. Mortgage interest costs and, and the element of them in the uh, index number, the CPI, that's of course going to be up when the Bank of Canada increases interest rates as people's mortgages roll over and they have to pay higher interest costs, right? But the Bank of Canada might be looking through this inflationary pressure saying, okay, well, when we start to cut rates, we'll see this come down. It's largely something that we're in control of. They also say one of the greatest risks that we could see a stalled out economy with, with very little growth is uh, mortgage renewals, right? Um, they say that many Canadians are facing upcoming mortgage renewals and record high levels of household debt. Um, they could become more cautious and cut back on consumption spending more than projected, and this could lead to a larger than expected slowdown in business investment and hiring, essentially saying, hey, when people start to really feel the costs of these higher interest rates, um, for those who haven't already felt those through mortgage renewals, well, that could have a larger impact than the Bank of Canada is predicting. And uh, we could see that impact this entire situation where they stop spending as much because they have to put so much more of a percentage of their income towards mortgage interest costs. Um, this, of course, is reducing the amount they spend and re reducing demand in the economy, slowing down growth across the entire economy. This is all one big way of the Bank of Canada saying, hey, everyone, look at this. Here's all the bad things that are happening in the economy or the slow down type things that are happening in the economy. We don't think we need to artificially slow it down anymore by increasing interest rates any longer. So they're giving us all these reasons on why they think, hey, the next step in our plan is probably going to be to stay here at this rate for a little while longer, but then cut rates in the future. But the big question is, what does saying that do to the average Canadian? Well, they actually sort of outline some of these uh, risks in terms of what Canadians could do in response to this new messaging and how it could uh, throw their uh, entire plan into the shitter. First of all, if they signal that rates are likely to come down in the future, what's the first thing that gets impacted by interest rates? Well, usually it's interest rate sensitive sectors like the real estate sector. Uh, what would happen if they say rates are gonna come down so all of a sudden there's a flood of more buyers into the market thinking, hey, now's my time to get in before prices uh, pop up again. 
Is there any concern that this kind of shift in language that you're announcing today uh, around, you know, unlikely we're going to see more rate hikes, now we're talking about how long it goes, is there any concern you could see a similar kind of uh, rebound froth in the housing market that could uh, put your progress in fighting inflation at risk? Yeah, um, you'll, you'll notice in, in the NPR mark that's one of the risks we point out. If we see um, an unexpected surge in house prices, that would, as you say, put uh, uh, upward pressure on inflation. So it, it is one of the risks. Um, it's, uh, it's not in our base case. You can see the, a return to inflation in our base case. And as the governor said, you know, that's really what's guiding uh, our, our decisions right now. Um, but that's definitely a risk we have our eye on. So as always, we, we don't get a lot of clarity from the Bank of Canada because while they're saying, hey, look at all these bad things in the economy, we're probably going to cut rates, they hedge their words at the same time saying, well, if these other things happen, well, we're going to change our minds and we might even raise rates again in the future. But they don't think that that's too likely, at least if you believe what they're saying. That They say, hey, if house prices go up again, well, that could increase uh, inflation even more by raising shelter costs, even though mortgage interest rates are, are largely doing that right now already. Ready, and they say, if that does materialize, well, then maybe we won't cut rates. Maybe we'll have to hold off for even longer. You probably already know that there are tons of different elements that go into making the overall inflation number that we look at, the CPI. They call these individual categories different components. Uh, and you can sort of see right here something interesting that uh, even though the amount has decreased, the, the amount of different CPI components that are still over the 3% target that the Bank of Canada is looking for is 50 over 50%. So over half of these components are still too inflationary for their liking. Um, so they say unless this comes down a little bit, well, then we're, we can't really start talking too much about rate cuts because it's not just mortgage interest that's, that's propping everything up. It's not just shelter costs, rent increases that's propping everything up. Um, the, more than half of the categories here are above our inflation target. They double down explaining how inflation could kind of come back, uh, even though they don't think that it's entirely likely, by using a narrative that I think is very frustrating for a lot of Canadians saying, hey, we're seeing wages for average Canadians increase just a little bit more than we'd like. And we're scared that that increase in wages would add to inflation because businesses would have to pay their workers more and then they would pass on the, those added costs to the consumer, increasing the cost of the goods that they sell and as a result, increasing our inflation numbers. So they say, hey, well, we're keeping an eye. We want to make sure that people don't get raises that are too big. Otherwise, that could be too inflationary and it might risk us not cutting rates as soon as we might like to. And they tack on an oldie but a goodie saying, hey, if global supply chains are impacted by different wars, whether it be the war in Ukraine or the situation in Gaza, the Red Sea, the ship interruption that you may have heard about, all of these things could also increase inflation because it costs more to get goods from point A to point B, and now if there's increased inflation as a result of this, we might hold back on cutting rates. If you find all of this a little bit confusing, I don't blame you because it feels like the Bank of Canada sees two different roads here, but their language that they used in this press conference makes it seem like they're more convinced that they're going to not be raising rates again and instead cutting them in the next little while. Many economic analysts in Canada think that this is likely to come around April and that the Bank of Canada could be just sort of setting people up for that expectation of rate cuts, even though they're acting right now like it's not a sure thing. All of these points that they're putting in here saying, hey, we may not ra raise rate or we may not cut rates. We may in fact raise them, even though they're kind of saying that's not the discussion anymore. I think all of this is kind of hedging it to make sure that the, the average uh, economic participant, average Canadians, don't go out there and act like it's a sure thing that rates are going to go down, uh, which could pump up inflation and stop them from cutting rates. Do you see what I mean? This is all examples of, of forward guidance and the impact that the way the Bank of Canada talks to Canadians can seriously impact the economy itself. I don't know. What do you think about all this? Uh, leave me a, a comment down below. I know a lot of people have lost a lot of faith in what the Bank of Canada says and, and maybe the impacts of the, the this forward guidance or what the Bank of Canada says is diminished because people, well, don't trust the Bank of Canada as much, especially given some of the comments at the beginning of the pandemic, like homeowners, you can trust that rates will be low for long. And then just a year and a half, two years later, we see rates shoot up to the highest in, in recent memory, right? So maybe that'll have an impact. 
what do you think? What have I missed? What have I gotten right? I'm just trying to figure things out like you are, um, but let's have a discussion down in the comments. And if you haven't already done so, sign up for the uh, newsletter that's coming out pretty much after every single one of these videos with different sources, different angles, bonus content. Um, you can do that at the first link in the description there and check that out. But with all that said, thanks so much for watching this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And I hope this video helped you out at least a little bit and I'll see you next time.